Welcome to another episode of Under the Strap. I'm your host, John Radhouse. In this week's episode, we've got Dwayne Bach on the pod, Kevin Kisner's right-hand man. We cover a variety of topics ahead of this week's match play after their fourth place finish at the Players, why Dewey hates playing golf with Kiz, comparing Kaz with Phil Mickelson, and as a winner of the prestigious North and South, what tour player he'd compare his game to. We highlight their four wins together, what makes Kisner a great match player, the Ryder Cup snub, the real reason he can't compete on certain courses, and we end with a hilarious sleepwalking story from a week they room together. It's a fun 47-minute conversation with tons of good nuggets. Enjoy. This Under the Strap podcast is presented by TheraBody. If your muscles are sore or tight, help them relax with the TheraBody Theragun. The number one massaging tool on the market and incredibly easy to use, the Theragun is designed to help you play longer and get more out of your body. So do what caddies and players on tour do and treat your muscles. Go to therabody.com slash caddy, C-A-D-D-I-E, to get your Theragun today, starting at just $199. Now it's time for another episode of Under the Strap. Welcome to another edition of the Under the Strap podcast. Join this evening by Dwayne Bach, caddy for Kevin Kisner. Dwayne, thanks for taking some time out. Absolutely, John. Good to be with you. Yeah, man. Well, let's do a, a quick little recap of the players before we get into it. Your man... Had a nice solo fourth out there. It was a good week for him. Um, I guess, was Kevin pleased with how it all went down? Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's uh, he's he likes that golf course. He plays well on it. Um, had some, a lot of success out there. So um, he looks forward to to coming to that place uh, every year. And uh, his game is starting to uh, turn around and peak. And and, uh, and so the conditions were, were really tough for us. But uh, he, he fought hard in that wind and uh, and played well all week. Yeah, I was interested. You were you guys were out there kind of in maybe the bad draw, quote unquote. You were out there a lot on Saturday. I guess when I saw the forecast early in the week and I saw west winds twenty to thirty miles an hour, I was like, Oh, that's not gonna be fun out there. I guess how would you describe the conditions? Yeah, it was it was tough because it was all crosswinds. It seemed like every hole was playing left to right or right to left. There was nothing downwind or or straight into the wind, so it made it made it really difficult. Um you know, they say it was the bad part of the draw, but um you know, I, I kind of, we were, at least we played golf every single day. Um, and it was one of those deals that uh, half the field had to play in it on Saturday. Um, and if you knew if you played well, you were going to be passing a lot of guys. And, and uh, Kevin got off to, we started on that back nine uh, in that wind. And we were fortunate enough that we barely got our first round in. So we didn't have to restart anywhere. We, we started our second round um on number 10 and um he played really really well on that front nine or the back nine which our first nine and um struggled a little bit on that back um made a couple bogeys coming in but to shoot 74 in those conditions were was unbelievable because of the the crosswinds yeah absolutely not losing any ground out there on that um i was listening to the subpar boys they had uh, kevin on early on in the week and you came down we were just talking about like a little 24-hour bug and and on the last day there, you after about the fifth hole, I guess you handed the bag over to Kisner's coach, John Tillery, and they were cutting it up with him. Kind of, uh, Kevin was just talking about how much different it was to have John out there than you. I mean, you're so organized, and you guys have your routines out there and stuff. I guess, you know, how hard was that for you to hand the bag over? It sounded like you weren't feeling up to it, so you had to do it. But then, you know, watching your man from the sidelines and then hearing Kevin talk about what it was like having – john out there kind of holding the umbrella and doing the yardages and all that yeah it was uh you know for me personally it's uh i I don't know what i don't i don't know what happened now we we had to come back for the restart on uh on monday morning um i felt great uh we had five holes left to play um work those five holes uh kevin and i talked after the round and uh we had a planned meeting about an hour um i went to the truck to drop uh drop my 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 gear off because it, it warmed up quickly um, and by the time I got to the truck, I, I started feeling nauseous and uh, vomiting and everything else like that. But, you know, there's there's part of me that, uh, man, I, I was I didn't know really what to do. Um, I didn't want to be a, a burden on anybody or be a burden on kids. I really felt like I could I could get through the day. I just needed something to settle my stomach, I guess to say. And um, 
so I, I reached out to his I, I knew John was there I reached I called him and, and he thought I was joking when I called him and told him you know something was wrong with me he's like no nah, you're just kidding but uh but I I was serious with him and uh and so I kind of I I went out and I tried for for five holes but I, I just couldn't uh um, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And, uh, so John came in there and, and, uh, and brought him home. But, uh, but he said he kind of almost was having a panic attack out there. It, it's, you know, it's, it's different to be thrown in the fire like that. It was, uh, it, it's not an easy situation and, and something that comes so easy to us because we do it all the time. Um, you know, we don't think about the situations we're in. We're just in, a, in the process. And, and that's how Kevin and I have dealt with it for 13 years now. It's, it's all about a process. It doesn't matter if we're, 12 over for 12 under or wherever we are in the tournament we have to we have to go through the process and and that's how we handle it but uh um something that's so easy for us is is difficult for somebody else and and john as, as kevin says he's uh he's not the most organized when it comes to where things are but but uh but they get along you know it, it just goes to show that caddying is is all about relationships and and how you uh, communicate with each other, and and they had a good time under that under that heat and in that situation. They had a good time out there together, and they were able to close it out yeah. and, and bring it on in. So, yeah, they're lucky it wasn't just some random person. You know, they had to bring underneath the rope line. I mean, you you guys dialed it in a little better than that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank goodness. Did you hit the I, shot on uh, on seventeen last week? Uh, no, um, I did not. Um, Kevin. Uh, you know, the back nine plays so long on that Wednesday because everybody's playing that back nine. Uh, we set up our practice schedule to play the fr uh, back nine on Thursday, and then we played the uh, front nine on Wednesday. Um, uh, I was going to uh, – I had the option to go out there and walk out there and hit the shot, but they ended up actually blowing yeah. uh, the horn um, when we finished our practice. So um, I just decided to get in, get in the truck and head on back to my – stay. I was staying at my mother's house. So yeah. – uh, so I, I left property. I saw a clip though from a previous year where you hit it up there, and I've hit the shot a couple times, and and you didn't hit a good one, and it's just you never know what's going to happen on that <laughs> hole. And but he was talking some good shit. I mean, I know you remember that. Did, tell, talk to me just about his shit talking ability. I mean, he's one of the best out there, right? Well, you know, everybody tell everybody's like, man, it must be, you know, you, you play with kids, it must be great to play with kids. And I'll, I'll tell you, I hate playing with them. He just. <laughs> He can he can put the seed in your mind and and, and he's difficult to, difficult to do anything with it doesn't matter if it's just chipping or putting or um, you know I, 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 he's unbelievable when it comes to those kind of things but uh, um, yeah it, it's a difficult you know I I have zero success I think I hit it I've hit the green one time yeah. standing seventeen t but uh, Kiz does actually I I just can't block him out for whatever reason it is <laughs> he's in your dome. Yeah, every chirp he has, and and like I said, it doesn't matter if we're chipping or if we're putting or or if we're just tossing a ball to see you know the closest to the ball for twenty dollars, whatever it is, he he can chirp you pretty good, and yeah. and he my head and and uh, zero six. I I can't. I don't even. I don't even. I, I play terrible when I'm with him. I I mean, I just hit duck hooks and blocks and miss <laughs> two footers, and um, so I, I just hate playing with Kevin Kisner. Well, yeah, and you're a good player too. I know that. I want I want to talk a little bit about that in a second. But I know you're in in uh, Tampa this week. Uh, I read you're a big seafood guy. I've had some good seafood down in Tampa before. I was wondering, what's your favorite stop on tour when it comes to seafood? Um, well, I mean, I grew up on Long Island, so it was a uh, it's something that I uh, I grew up eating. Um, I I do love Hilton Head. It's one of my favorite spots on tour. Um, plenty of places to go. Um, it's also always during, uh, most of the time it's during my kids' uh, spring break week. So uh, the family's with me and uh, and we can go. But the the the, um, the unfortunate thing is my, my wife has a, uh, and my daughter have a uh, shell food, uh, shellfish allergy. So they uh, they can't eat that kind of stuff. But uh, my mom, you know, she she'll she'll make the scallops and the shrimp and all those kind of things for me when I'm when I'm with her. But I do love Hilton Head. Hilton Head is probably my favorite place to go uh, go on tour. Yeah, absolutely. And that seems like that's one you know that's on your guys' short list to to get a win at. You've had a lot of nice wins, but I'm sure that's one that that he wants to tick off. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh well, it's a great golf course for him. Um, he uh, it just sets up for his game and um. Uh, he loves it there, and uh, like yeah, we lost uh, well, lost that playoff, but uh, um, 
you know, he it was one of those that he got beat on, and uh, you know, Furyk uh, beat him two yeah. two thirties in the playoff. But uh, yeah, um, who knows? Maybe it's this year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, can we can we talk about your calves a little bit, Dwayne Box <laughs> calves? What what's the deal? Why is the Twitter the Twitter doesn't is defunct now? <laughs> yeah, I, I well, I I, did, I never knew who it was to begin with. Um, uh, you know, everybody kind of they thought it was me or a friend of mine. I I, I never knew who it was. Um, I kind of thought it might have been a bunch of people because there were pictures from inside the ropes, and then there was pictures yeah. from the galleries, like up in stands and stuff. So um, I didn't know who it was or or anything. Um, they did reach out when it when it first started. They did reach out to me and. and uh, asked if it was okay if they did it and I, I said you know as long as you keep it clean and, and right. don't uh, don't do anything stupid I guess to say but uh, but yeah they uh, <laughs> I don't know where they are or who it was but uh, yeah. wow. wow well you I mean clearly something you're born with but also I mean is it more what no. you're, that you're born with or from all this work walking over all these years have sculpted those yeah, we actually in the pro am today. A guy goes, well, you know, look at those calves. He goes from carrying that big bag around. I said, no, it's from carrying this big body around for <laughs> two years of my life. But, uh, but no, my old man, my dad had had, uh, had big calves. My brother has big calves, and you know, I don't have a sister, but I always joke around with people. <laughs> look at those calves. I said, yeah, well, you should see my moms and my sisters. But uh, no. <laughs> genetics i mean if you look at the rest of the part of my body it's uh it's not like i i work out every day well you guys had a great pairing there at the president's cup with mickelson and this was before he was on social media i think but i mean was there some calf talk that week i mean he claims to have some really good ones and he does but i gotta think you've got him beat there yeah he uh no he uh he during yeah i guess back in 2017 when we played with him uh, you know he that was uh I guess before he maybe got on social media and all that so much, but uh, but no, we've had uh, we've had some good uh, good little banter back and forth on things. We played a practice round with him uh, at the U.S. Open. Uh, the one shoot, my mind went blank. The one that uh, uh, Bryson won, um, but we uh, uh, so wing I foot. yeah wing foot. So uh, he was hitting a shot, and I, I kind of stood behind him, and Tillery took a picture of him, and uh, and so trying to compare him side by side, but. Uh, so we've had some good banter back and forth, but, uh, but yeah, for, you know, but he's, uh, he's half my size really. So right. I should, I should have twice the size of calves. So then a practice run with Mickelson and we were talking about your boy, Kevin's ability to talk crap. I mean, Phil's really good at it. Like, can he get in Phil's dome? Like what's Phil saying to Kevin out there? There, there are, there are a few things that, uh, that keeps him quiet. You know, it, it's fine. I, you know, I, I don't, re we played with Phil, um, the British one year, and I can't remember. Phil said something, you know. I, I but I remember Phil could not come back, and he just kind of looked at me, and he's like, "I, I, I don't have a, I don't have a comeback," and he just started laughing. But, <laughs> but Kevin, Kevin can do that to you. He'll, he'll, uh, he's quick witted, and and he can come up with some things, and and you just don't know, you don't know how to respond to him. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he, yeah. he gets you quiet pretty quick. Well, I was, I mean. How I mean, before we get on to kind of your background, how good is this job, man? Because I was looking at it like, I mean, you guys have been together for 13 years now. But, I mean, you've you've got a player that's really cool. You know, he contends regularly. He doesn't play a ton. He went out and bought you a truck a few years ago. I mean, it's kind of a, a unicorn job. It, it's, it's a really cool gig to have, isn't it? It, it really is. It's uh, – I'm, I'm very fortunate that – I met Kevin. Uh, I was I was caddying for a kid out here, uh, uh, Doug LaBelle, My first two years uh, um, on the PGA Tour, and uh, we went to a U.S. Open qualifier in Memphis, Tennessee, and, and happened to play. Uh, just got paired up with Kevin in a, in a practice round, and and we hit it off, and we stayed in touch. I think that was 2007, um, and then at tour school in 2009. I just uh, I was looking for work and gave him a call and, and went to work for him at Q School and, and been with him ever since. But um, you know, I, I just, I have a lot of respect for him. I, I, you know, when I first met him and, um, I know how hard he worked and, 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 um, I just, I just love the kid. And, and, you know, we, we started on the web tour, uh, I, yeah, I guess, well, I, maybe it was called the nationwide tour back then, but the corn Ferry tour, we started there, went up to the PGA tour, played there for two years, um, lost our card, had to go back to the web tour. And, um, at that point, 
you know, he told me, he said, man, I'll help you find a bag on the PGA Tour because, you know, you just, I had a family, I had a young family, and he's like, I just can't pay you the, the money that I'm paying you um, now on the tour playing down there. And, and um, but I didn't want any part of it. I, you know, I, I knew that this was a business for him and it's business for me and there's, there's ups and downs and there's waves you have to ride. And, and we were on, you know, we were on the down slope, but, uh, but I wasn't going to jump ship. And so I've, I've showed him a lot of loyalty and he showed me a lot of loyalty. And, you know, I think that goes a long way. It's, um, you know, I'm 14, 15 years older than he is, but, uh, but we get along and, and I don't know, for whatever reason we gel and, um, you know, there's nothing but love for each other, and, and he takes care of me, and I take care of him, and yeah. um, hopefully we can, you know, ride off in the sunset together. Well, I was looking at that. I mean, and you know, and he won pretty early when he was on, on the web or whatever, and and then you know, a couple years out on tour, got card back, lost it, and then you went back out there and won again in Chile. Were you there for that one? No, Chile. Uh, that again, that was an expense that uh, that he couldn't afford to get me down there to Chile, so. Um, I did not go to Chile. He had a local local caddy with him, um, and uh, so that was one that I did not uh, did not win with him. But then when he got back out on tour, like I think it was like thirteen, fourteen there maybe. And what changed in that period of time? You know, from your vantage point, you know, he had a little seasoning, kind of knew what to expect. But there was certainly, I mean, when he got back out there is when he took off. He hasn't left since. Yeah, you know, it, you know, it takes everybody. Everybody takes a little bit of time to get your feet under you. And, and uh, you know, I really, I think it was 2014. We went back out. Um, he was playing pretty good. I think he just started uh, with with John Tillery um, right right then. Started really feeling uh, the golf swing turn around for him and, and getting control of his golf swing. And um, the moment that that I remember most was the Canadian Open. Uh, final round, we were paired with VJ Singh, and I think that was 2014. Um, and um, he just basically tee to green all, all all day, just just outplayed him and uh, got his first top ten. I think I think it was his might, might not have been his first top ten, but mm-hmm. we uh, we finished top ten in the Canadian Open right then and there. And then you could just see something something clicked inside of him, and and then. Uh, um, we made it to the playoffs to keep his card. We got knocked out that first playoff round, and and, uh, and then 2015 was when he when he took off and lost all the playoffs. You know, we lost mm-hmm. like three playoffs that year, and um, but uh, but 2015 is when things just uh, took off for us. Well, yeah, you go out there with VJ and go toe to toe with him and outplay him. That's going to be good for your confidence. Um, exactly, 100. percent Well, let's go back to your kind of playing career a little bit, if you'll indulge me. I mean. You got a nice accolade there. Campbell Campbell's Campbell Camels. You know, That's Campbell it. University of North Carolina guy. You won the 92 North and South, which is, you know, I don't know a ton about it, but I know that's a great trophy, prestigious tournament. A lot of good names on that. I guess, you know, tell me a little bit about that highlight in your playing career. Uh, yeah, well, I, you know, uh, going back, I, I played, uh, I grew up Long Island, New York. Um, so I came from a small town, East Hampton, the Eastern and Long Island. Um, I wasn't recruited out of college. I mean, uh, I wasn't recruited out of high school. So I had to basically find a place to play. Um, Campbell gave me an opportunity to to walk on. Um, fortunate enough that uh, I got through that qualifying process and made it on the team and, and started right away to play. And um, had a decent college career. I won four college tournaments. Um, so uh, it was uh, one of those deals where uh, – it was in college. I kind of felt like this was something that I may want to do f- to try for, for a living to turn pro. And, um, I had to go back my fifth year because, uh, in, in college I was just taking the bare minimum 12, 15 hours of credits, um, not going to summer school, playing golf in the summer. Um, and Campbell gave me the opportunity to come back. They took care of my school and, and, and hired me as an assistant coach so I could still play and took care of my school. So I graduated that year in 92, Went to Pinehurst and played in the North South and and uh, and was able to win that and uh, from there I had some uh, some members from the Maidstone Club that I grew up working at that got together and um, I was I finished 1992 I think I was ninth ranked amateur in the country and but it was a it was a non Walker Cup year so um, but they uh, they provided me some uh, an opportunity to go play they they sponsored me for two years um, so I went out to uh, to the Canadian tour, played the Canadian tour and I went down to South Africa and played in South Africa. And then, uh, 
and I, I continued to play for 12 years. But so, uh, so what what's your game like, or what was your game like when you were at the height of your powers? Was there anybody uh, you could compare it to on tour? Uh, maybe uh, maybe a Colt Nost. I mean, I, I was uh, I was a guy that uh, I hit it very straight. I wasn't very long. Um, I you know m- my weakest part of my game was my iron game, um, and then uh, with my wedges chipping and putting. I, I felt like I was as good as anybody. Um, but, uh, you know, my deal was I, I just, I had no length. Um, and I, I played in most of my career, you know, my, my best years were mid nineties to late nineties. Um, and that's when the equipment started changing. The ball started changing guys started picking up yardage, but I never did for whatever reason. Uh, um, so I, you know, I continued to hit a driver 250 yards, 260 yards. And, and that was it. But um, um, I was never, for whatever reason, I was never a good mid iron player. Um, but you know, he got me inside a hundred yards. I, I was pretty, pretty good. And um, and that's how I kind of could beat people. Or and com- I could compete for um, a number of days. It was just you know, could I compete over a four day period? I, I had a, I had trouble doing that. That's why you know, as a professional up in Canada, I had success, but I never won. I. I had a bunch of second place finishes. I, I lost tournaments with the lead and or you know almost getting up there and things like that. But uh, um, but I never won. But I finished second. I mean I finished eleventh on the money list, fifteenth on the money list, seven. You know I just every year I was always up there, but I never won. And yeah. I think that was just because I wasn't as consistent with my iron game, but but pretty good short game and putter. Well, you mentioned um, Pinehurst. You know, kind of you know you went to school in the area. You win, uh, you know, the North and South at Pinehurst. I was curious because you said that Payne Stewart was one of your favorite golfers of all time because he's one of my favorites too. In fact, I randomly was at the last tournament he ever played in at the Disney um, on a family vacation. And one of my favorite tournaments ever watching is the 99 U.S. Open. I'm just wondering, you know, kind of what you remember about that, that U.S. Open and if it's something you've ever talked to Hicksie about. Uh, no, you know, I, I mean, you know, I, I almost, I haven't talked to Hixie about it. I almost, you know, I just, it's, uh, you know, Hixie's, you know, I, I look at him more of a legend than, uh, it's like, I'm almost scared to talk to him about it. <laughs> I just don't know. I, you know, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine losing kids and, and, you know, for to lose, you know, his player like that. It's, it's, it's one of those things that I'm not comfortable talking to him about, you know, but, um, yeah, Payne Stewart, I just, you know, as a kid growing up, I just I just saw how he treated fans. I just saw, you know, those, you know, when I was in college and, and things like that. And, you know, I, I you know, my family is very important to me, and, and I'll never forget that image. Uh, I think it was at Bay Hill when he was playing and trying to win at Bay Hill, and he went over to uh, to his house there and, and gave his little girl a, a kiss and things like that. It's, you know, it's little things like that that I remember that I just, you know, I, I admired him for. And, you and, um, and his style, you know, he just uh, didn't care what anybody thought. He wanted to be different. He didn't want to wear khakis and a white shirt. And I thought that was pretty cool. Well, you know, that's a great segue into kind of what I wanted to talk about next because you guys had a, an awesome win uh, last fall at the Wyndham. Uh, and there's a great story that goes along with that, kind of where your daughter was starting college uh, and the tea times worked out. And you were able to play in the morning on Friday and you hightailed it to Charlotte to kind of help her move into her dorm, start college. I mean, that was a really magical week for you guys. I, I guess maybe tell me a little bit about how cool that week was for you, you know, last yeah. August, I guess. Yeah, it was uh, it was moving day for her college. She's moving into college and uh, it just uh, it just happened to work out. I mean, it was one of those deals that, you know, tea times come out always around noon or early afternoon on a Tuesday and um it just uh it you know when the tea times came out it was one of those deals where i was going to be able to make it and, and uh so tuesday afternoon i told kevin you know and he knows he he knows how important my kids are to me and 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 uh and my family so um and charlotte and, and greensboro is only maybe an hour and a half away from each other so uh i told him as soon as we're done man i'm i'm, I'm out i'm on the road and and uh um i kind of got the the better end of it because uh, mom had to move all the heavy stuff. <laughs> I got there after all that was done, but uh, but it was it was a special day for us. And then uh, and then to turn around and go ahead and win that golf tournament uh, even made it a more special week. Yeah, 
I was I, I was watching uh, some of Kevin on uh, Gary Williams show and he and he had a quote in there. He just kind of said, "You're never as far off as you think you are, and you're never playing as good as you think you are." And you know that summer, you guys you know hadn't been playing very well, and and I, I noticed on your uh, winning caddy video that you put out for the Caddy Network, which was really cool. Um, you kind of just talked about how you guys were just you know super competitive, but really struggling all summer grinding on the range, you know, things weren't just weren't going your way, I guess. Um, you know, you have a good relationship. You have, you know, you have that built up, but you know, how, how difficult was that, uh, you know, going through that over the summer and then to kind of come out on the other end? Yeah. You know, it, you know, caddying is easy when, when things are going well, but it's, uh, you know, the down times are tough. I mean, it's, uh, and, you know, you you just see the effort that that the whole team puts in, the effort that I'm putting in. I I, I know I know I'm working hard, and I know he's working hard. But uh, you know, behind the scenes, you you, you have his Tim Yelverton, his, his short game coach, and John Tillery, his swing coach. I, I mean, everybody's just working so hard for you know to accomplish the same goal, and and uh, we just weren't getting the results. But you know, you just you just kind of keep fighting through there. And and we went to Memphis the week before. Um, uh, Greensboro and boy he, he played so well but we had maybe five just disaster type of holes that you know a bad you know but it, I just the good was just too good and and um, I remember I told him I said man we're close and, and he just did not you know he almost snapped at me a little bit he's like close well we, you know we're, you know we're nowhere near close and then uh um, but, uh, you know, you just have to keep planting that seed that, man, you're not that far off because he, because he wasn't the, the, the great shot. The good shots were great. I mean, there was just, uh, there was no mediocre. And, uh, and I just felt like if we could just clean things up, if I could, uh, maybe just, you know, change my verbiage a little bit and, and clean my, my side of it up, that would clean other things up. And, you know, and, uh, I knew we were close and sure enough, uh, you know, that's the first thing I told him after he, he made that uh, birdie on the second playoff hole is, uh, you know, when we hugged, I told him, I said, I told you we were close and we had a good chuckle on that one. Nice. A quick break here at the turn to tell you more about the Therabody Theragun. I got mine last summer. It's part of my daily routine and my body has never felt better. I use it before and after caddying, playing golf, working out, or even relief from being hunched over chasing our one-year-old. It's so easy to use that I like to use mine while I'm watching TV. And like a lot of you, I'm traveling again soon, so I've got the Theragun Mini ready to go. Pumped about that. It's a space saver in your luggage and the most popular one with caddies on tour, so I can't recommend it enough. All right, let's get back to the podcast. You know, another one, you know, we were talking earlier about when he kind of got cooking in 2015 and you had some playoff losses. And then finally, the last term of the year, he goes off and, you know, blows the doors off the place. I mean, I... You know, he f- shot a final round 64 at the RSM. Uh, kind of a kind of a home game for him a little bit, I, I, I suppose, being a Georgia guy. Was that a case where he just said, fuck it, you know, I'm going to go win this week? Like, was he just blinders on and, and it was his tournament? Or, or how did that one kind of come to be? Um, you know, I, you know, I don't know if it's that it was that mentality. I mean, I, you know, I think you might say that almost every week. Fuck it, I'm going to go win. So, um, it was, uh, it was just the perfect storm. I mean, he, I, I'll never, you know, it, it was one of those deals where, um, 2000, I can't remember if we played there before that year or not. Um, but I do remember, um, he joked with me because the SEC championship was, is played at that golf course. And, um, I remember, uh, the week before he's like, I, I'm going to, you, you take me around every course, uh, all year, but I'm going to take you around, uh you know, around there. So, um, so I, he, he was just so comfortable that it was just like, all I had to do is carry the bag and stay out of the way. Almost. It's, he knew the lines to hit it. He knew where to hit it. He knew what the greens did. He, he played in every, um, every wind condition you could possibly play in. I mean, he, he played there for four years in that SEC championship. So, um, he's he was comfortable there. And, and, um, but I do remember going out before that final round. And, and when you have such a, you know, he, he, I can't remember how many shot lead we had over, I think we were, uh, Maybe over three Ke- or something. 
three yeah, or four? Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a pretty solid lead over, uh, I think it was Chapel and maybe uh, Graham McDowell. But, uh, um, you know, he was a little bit more nervous because, you know, when you have a big lead like that, it's it's like the only thing you can do is, is screw it up. And uh, But he went out and he, he made some early birdies and kept the pedal down, and that's what he does. He's, he's a... He's a situational type of player. He loves to know what he has to do, and 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 he doesn't let his foot off the gas. He is, uh, he he he's um, he steps on your throat, so to speak, and and uh, and that's what he did that day. And um, you know, it wasn't until pretty much we got it over the water on seventeen or sixteen that par four that uh, that I knew we had it uh, pretty much locked up. Well, that's a great you know, statement there about how he keeps the pedal down. And I want to talk about that a little bit. One of the reasons I had John is because, you know, we're dropping this during the match play. That's coming up. That's another one of your great wins. Before we get to that one, I just wanted to touch on Colonial a little bit. Um, 2017, he won there in uh, Fort Worth. But there was a funny story he kind of talked about on the subpart podcast. And I don't know if you remember this. I was trying to figure it out. I think it must have been 2015. And he went out the first round played pretty good and Tillery was there and invited him to a concert that night to go see Collective Soul, which he knew one of the guys in the band and you didn't know anything about this. And he went out on Friday and, you know, played, you know, played okay enough to make the cut. And, but he said something to you. He just said, you don't know how good this round was. He was hung over. He was out till 3 a.m. I guess, you know, what do you remember about that? And, uh, is there any other stories kind of like that with him? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that, that as far as that week, um, I think we finished on number nine and he had a, you know, it, it's got that front pin with the water right in front. It's, and it's, you know, you, you don't know what the wind's doing. Is it going to hurt it? How much is it going to hurt it? And, uh, and he hit it in there and hit it on the green. And then he handed me the club and he goes, you don't understand how good this round was. And I'm like, well, what do you, I mean, yeah, it was a pretty good round, but what do you mean? He's like, man, and then he told me the story about how he got in late and then uh, and he went out with Tillery the night before and stuff. And we had a good laugh about that. And uh, I can't remember. Uh, I think it was I think it was 2017. Um, we were playing Colonial as well, and we were playing um, we were playing with Steve Stricker. And uh, I'll never forget. Uh, we we played the first two rounds with Strick and. Um, Kevin, we finished on that ninth hole as well, and, and he made a long putt for birdie, and, and I think he might have might have been leading the tournament then, and it might have been the year we won, actually. I think and, it was, yeah, 17. And, yeah, he made a putt, and then he looks over at Strick, you know, the crowd's going crazy, and he looks over at Strick, and he goes, don't you want somebody like that on your team that can putt, that can putt like that on your team? And it was, it was pretty classic, and so uh, a couple months later, we were, uh, he was our captain in the President's Cup, so that was pretty funny. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, and, and he, what a great record he had at, you know, and let, that's a great segue into the match play. I mean, you guys partnered up with Phil at that thing. Uh, didn't lose a match you have with Lahiri. That's a hot name coming in to this week now on Sunday. I mean, you know, what is it about match play that brings out the best in kids? Uh, I, I think it fits his personality to be honest with you. I think, um, you know, that's, uh, that's that's who he is he loves uh he loves to compete he loves uh he hates to lose i mean he, he, he um and um and you know i i think he's uh um i guess to say he's a, he's a situational player i, I think he, he 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 loves he wants to know what what it what the situation is and and um and at times early in a, in a tournament in a stroke play tournament he may get a little too aggressive or a little too impatient with things just because he may, you know, we may tee off on a Thursday afternoon and he looks up on the leaderboard nine unders leading already. And here we are, we just bogeyed the third hole and we're one over and, you know, but hell, we got 69 more holes to play and, and he'll get a little, you know, a little antsy, maybe a little impatient because of, you know, um, but with match play, that's not the case. I mean, it's just you, the golf course and, and the other player and, and, um, and and he he plays so well. I mean, look at him coming down the stretch uh, um, on Monday at the players. I mean, he just uh, he knew that if he hadn't wanted it, any chance to win, he was going to have to bury those last four holes or whatever. And he and he damn near almost did. You know, with that putt on if it didn't if it went in on eighteen there, he would have buried the last four. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, he's a he's a situational player. He loves to know what he has to do, and 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 he goes out and 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 he's not scared. I mean, he just he he's just 
Um, the, the confidence he has in his abilities is unbelievable. The mind that he has, and, and it's just perfect for match play. Yeah, and I mean, you guys, you know, at first, I think the first match play he had in 16, kind of getting your feet wet, and then 17, he started to play even better in it. You ran into Brooks Kepka that year, and then you went off and did the thing at Liberty National, which was great, and then come back in 18, and uh, you kind of got, you took down, uh, let's see, DJ uh, Poulter, eight and six. You guys have ran into Poulter in this thing a couple times because the next year when you won, you ran into Poulter. I guess he's another guy that loves match play. Tell me about being out there with Poulter, Kisner versus Poulter. What's that like? You know, it's it's just great. It's phenomenal. I mean, uh, and I I love it. You know, I mean, you look at you know. I had, you know, the the North South was a was a match play event for me. I mean, sixty four players in match play, and and I was able to get through that. And you know, I love match play. He loves match play, and and to see those names, and I mean, that's who you want to play against. I mean, you want to you want to play against the best. And but the the the, the weird thing is that you know we we lost in the finals to Bubba, right? I think yeah, uh, Bubba, yeah. And the next year we show up in our first matches against Poulter after we we beat him eight and whatever it was uh, the year before, and Poulter beat us. Uh, I think yep. one, whatever it was. Um, but then uh, I think we both ended up in that round robin, finishing two and one, and we went into a playoff. And Kevin ended up burning I think the fourth playoff hole to to advance through the round robin, and and then uh, won his next four matches to win the tournament. But so yeah, we've seen uh, we've seen Ian a few times out there, and. Um, but that's, you know, again, it, it doesn't matter who it is. It's right. you got to play the golf course and you got to play the situations that uh, that are laid before you and and, uh, and he's not scared. Yeah. I, I like the way they made the change a couple of years ago to that pod system. And then it, I, what do you think about that whole little, you know, you go through your pod and then you end up tied with a guy like you did with Poulter and then you have to go kind of do a sudden death thing. Do you like the way they, they have it structured right now? Well, hell yeah! I mean, I love it. I mean, you go, uh, you lose your first match, and you still uh, still walk away with with over a million dollars. Yeah, it's it's great. So, uh, um, yeah, I I think it's the only way to do it for television. And, and as good as these guys are, it's uh, you know the one and done is tough. Um, you know, it'd be true match play, sure. I mean, it it would be great. I, I'd love to see them do. You know, they have that Zurich Classic, which is a team yeah. event. I'd love to see him do a, a match play team event um, if they could, you know, just to change change things up a little bit. Um, and with that, maybe they wouldn't have to do a round robin type of deal. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I guess to answer your question, yeah, I think it, I think it's fair um, because um, you know in the game of golf, I mean, anything can happen on any given day, and and uh, um, for television and sponsors and things like that, at least it gives everybody everybody's out on that golf course for three days and um, gets the viewership up and things like that. Yeah. So. I, I mean, I don't mind that round robin one bit. Well, he was pretty vocal last fall when, you know, the phone didn't ring in a good way to get on that Ryder Cup team. And and uh, he's always going to say what he thinks, I guess. And I don't want to drag you into it. But, I mean, I, that that's frustrating, I guess. You guys have a good record in match play. You go out in the President's Cup, prove that you're a good teammate, can win what you, what you need to, and haven't gotten the call in the Ryder Cup yet. I mean, I know that's something that, you know, very well could happen next go round is that something that weighs on him a lot or he kind of said ah, i don't care about it whatever um you know i, I you know I, I can't speak for him i don't know how much it weighs on him um i do know that uh, when we um we had so much fun um and so much pride playing playing that president's cup uh, at liberty national in 2017 that um i do remember him making the statement to me he goes this this is the goal every year is to make one of these teams um and so i I know it's important. I mean, who wouldn't want to represent the United States in, in a team event at the end of the year? I mean, it's the ultimate to me. Um, for me, you know, as a caddy, I would have to say I, it's the top of my list. I mean, it's, it, it's uh, you know, the best experience I've ever had as a caddy, um, being in that team room and, and being around those players. Um, so I know it's special to them. Um, but uh, to be disappointed, I guess, three or four years now in a row, um, it's uh, it's it's got a way on you a little bit, but um, you know, 2017 he earned his way on. So um, yeah. kind of how he feels about it, he's got to earn his way on. Um, and um, I guess uh, you know it's just unfortunate for 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 his style of play that um, you know to be a pick, 
you have to go with the hot hand if you're a captain. I, I think you have to go with guys that are playing well at the time. And unfortunately for us, when we head up to the northeast, um, those golf courses are very difficult and don't fit into his style of, of game, so to speak. Um, they're longer. They're, um, you know, they're firmer, whatever, whatever it is. It's just we just don't have success in the in the Northeast where where those um, those playoff events have been and 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 you know so we kind of stall out in the playoffs. I mean we, he's made it to the Tour Championship plenty of times, but um, when you get in the Northern grasses, it, he's he'd rather play on the Southern grasses. So, right. um, but he did go over to Paris and and he loved Paris the week before. Um, played played with the. Uh, with some of the guys that might might have made that team uh, the week before the British Open, um, and he played very well. He loved that golf course. He he talked to me that he thought that golf course fit his game really well, um, and he was overlooked that year. Um, yeah. And then that Melbourne, been one, yeah. Melbourne, and 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 uh, for the Presidents Cup. So, I mean, it's uh, it's just one of those deals that you have to play well leading into yeah. it the week before, and 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 uh, we just haven't we just haven't done that. Yeah, you talked a little bit there about some of maybe, I don't know if limitations is the best word, but I mean, he's been vocal again on stuff like, hey, there's some tournaments I just don't have a chance at. You know, and he said he's has no problem saying that. I guess my question to you is when you hear him say that, and maybe he'll say it to you on a Monday, or maybe you know it from previous experience, how do you process that? And then can you come up with any examples of like, hey, you said that you can't contend here and you almost won, you know, one week? Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I, I think it, it's. It's. I think he uses a more self motivation. Um, I don't think. Uh, I believe he, he, he. You know, he, he can compete on any golf course. It's just that. Uh, you know, hell, we almost won the, the 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 PGA Championship that year when it was uh, when it, when it was at Quail Hollow, and and. Um, but we also know that we have to be on point in every facet of the game, and um, you know, we just. You, and when you're when you have to do that, I mean it's it, it's tough, and and you know it's tough, and he's being realistic. Um, but I, is it that you know you, you talk to people, and you know sometimes I, if you talk about it enough, do you start believing it? Some people would say yes, but I, I believe Kevin uses it as more of a self motivation. Um, I've heard him say plenty of times, you know, these uh, these um, these. What are these WGC events, which we no longer have, but you know, when it's limited fields and there's no cuts and stuff, uh, you know, early in the week, you'd be like, ah, it doesn't matter, you know, 40, you know, last place is forty thousand dollars, you know, that kind of deal, and all of a sudden you bowie the first or second hole, and and he's he's pissed off, and it's like, well, I thought it didn't matter, you know, so <laughs> it does matter, and and uh, but I think it uses it more as self motivation than anything else. I like that answer. Well, then let's talk about just. I mean, winning a major, that's up there with the Ryder Cup, too. That's another one that's on his list. This year, when you talk about southern grasses and stuff, there's two that come to mind. This Southern Hills one has to be very intriguing uh, to him. Um, I've seen that golf course. I, I don't know what the redesign, how long it's actually going to play, but you get some Bermuda grass going. That's something that he's familiar with. And then he also mentioned St. Andrews, um, which is the Open this summer, as being one that he thought that he could could win at. I guess, what are your – thoughts on you know opportunities this summer in the majors yeah i mean i, I think uh as far as opportunities i think uh, the british lends itself uh you know to the to the best opportunity for us um so uh so yeah it's always looking forward to get over there to st andrews the last time we played st andrews uh we we got on that bad side of the again it was a wind issue um um and uh, actually, we had a wind delay and, and uh, kind of got the bad, bad side of the draw there. But um, um, I, I, I'm looking forward to going back to St. Andrews. Um, he, he can play the ball on the ground um, and uh, and has all the shots to be able to play over there. Um, so that's going to be that's going to be fun. Now, um, the uh, the Southern Hills, I, I've never been there. So, I you know, that's actually one state that I've never been. I've never been in Oklahoma. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And uh to be honest with you, I haven't researched any of it. I haven't, I haven't heard, I haven't talked to anybody about that golf course. So um, I'm going to have to learn a lot about it. And, uh, but um, yeah, it's, uh, and then where are the other two? I mean, I'm, uh, well, you got the, the country club up in Boston. Yeah. So, and then Augusta, which, you know, yeah, no chance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Augusta 13 be... years hanging out with each other. You got, you said, um, Oh, the million dollars in the back. <laughs> yeah. No chance. <laughs> 
Uh, well, then you talk about so, – just give me a little insight then. You said, oh, I haven't seen Southern Hills before. So you said, ah, I talked to some people. Like, what? what is your – game? I mean, you've got tournament this week, I know, but when you think about that in the back of your head, like what's your due diligence going to be like just so people kind of get a glimpse into how you – prep in a situation like that well yeah i mean you just you you talk to guys that, that have been around there um that that have been the you know past championships that are there um you get their insight you and then uh for me it's it's trying to get local knowledge it, it, are there are there um are there local caddies there that that may know things uh, um and i started doing that all the way back um um actually uh rick harris that that caddies out here now um for jim no uh knows um he uh he was our uh, local caddy at chambers bay mm -hmm. and um so he walked around with us in the practice rounds and he gave us the insight well actually i think he even carried the bag in the practice in the in the, in the practice rounds for us caddy and, for a caddy yeah and um you know and, and i lean on them I, I lean on a lot of guys around augusta um we've done it a number of times where where we'll we'll get a local guy to or i'll i'll get a local guy to uh to uh to get in his ear and, and, and try to get some information about what, what, what goes on around there. And, and, uh, but courses are changing so much that, uh, you know, if the tournament hasn't been there in 10 years, it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard to talk to somebody who says, well, yeah, back in, you know, 2012, it was like this. Well, 2022, yeah. it's going to be different. So, yeah. um, but that's why I like to, to get the local caddies and, and kind of get their feel on things and, and things like that. So, um, that's kind of what I do. I like that. I, I've done that some in the past too. Um, all right, a few more. We'll get you out of here. Uh, he told another funny story. He was, he said he's a crazy dreamer. He said he's a he's a night terror guy, and he told a funny story about I don't know who he's rooming with, but the middle of the night, you know, he says he only sleepwalks on the road, and he's like curled up on the air conditioning unit, like wondering where the hell he is and stuff. And you know, I know I've these guys come to the course the next day you come to the course the next day it's always just like hey what happened last night you, you get a lot of good stories i guess do you have any have any comments on on kevin kisner and night terrors uh yeah actually i have a uh, one experience with him with that um we um early in our career we got uh we last minute we got into mexico um so in cancun and um shoot i i i didn't know what to do where where to stay and he's like well just you just stay with me um, and, um, so we, uh, we, we were staying at the resort in the same, you know, basically the same room and I, and I sleep with a sound machine. So it's, uh, it is, it's heavy rain and it's just running water all night long. So, and I hear nothing. Yeah. Um, and I, I wake up and lights are coming on and I wake up and I look and he's walking around the room and he turns the light on in the bathroom and turns it off. And then he walks over into the closet and turns the light, opens the door to the closet and turns the light on in the closet and turns it off and back into the bathroom. He turns it on and off and he's back and forth, back and forth. And then he finally goes to bed. And I'm, so I, I don't say anything to him. I just watch him and he goes back to bed. So the next morning we wake up and I said, Kevin, what were you doing last night? He said, what do you mean? I go, you were up and you were turning the lights on and off. You're looking in the closets. You're looking in the drawers. You're looking in the bathroom. He said, what's that? He goes, man, I, I remember I had a dream and, his wife's name is Brittany, and he said, Brittany was yelling at me. He said, we have a leak. Fix the leak. And he's like, I, I was yelling at her. I couldn't, I couldn't find the leak. I could hear, but I couldn't find the leak. So uh, so that was the dream he was having because of my sound machine was going crazy. Sound but, machine. That's good. So that All was right. I like that. Sleepwalking. That's funny. All right. Well, we'll get you out of here on three of these. What's your What's your favorite course to caddy at on tour? Not Maybe not Augusta. What's your favorite one to go to? Uh, uh, Harbor Town. Okay. Love Who, who's a player that's impressed you the most over the years that you've been paired with? I mean, you guys have been grouped with a lot of them. Who's impressed you the most? Uh, Alexander Shoffley. And then if you had to take one caddy, a tour caddy, to caddy for you, final round of the U.S. Open, you've got a one-shot lead, you need to call someone off the bench, who are you going to give a call to? Joe Griner. Oh, I like that answer. All right. Well, cool. Dwayne, thanks so much for joining me. This has been great. Really appreciate catching up with you. Are we over already? Yeah, we're done. 47 minutes. Man, that was fast. Yeah. Try to keep it fast. <laughs> well, you that know was... you got to get to bed. You got a good, you got a tournament coming up. Yeah, I know. Now I'm, now I'm all keyed up and now I can't go. <laughs> you kept the old man up now. 
you turn that sound machine on, you'll be out <laughs> in no time. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks, right, Jeff, buddy. Thanks for having me, man. That was fun, and uh, we'll do it anytime you want. Sounds good. All right. Be good. Thank you. Just a reminder that this Under the Strap podcast is presented by the Therabody Theragun. We'll be back soon with another podcast, so please subscribe. And in the meantime, make sure to follow the Caddy Network on all your social media channels. I'm host John Radhouse. Thank you for listening.